to the again once again for giving us the privilege and the opportunity to come together collectively in his presence. He is he among us? He promised in his word. God promised that the two or three or more are gathered together in his name. He said, there am I in the midst of them. You know, someone made a song that says he dwells in the midst of his people. And not only do God dwell in us, he also lives in us. Our body is his dwelling place. Please, constantly, I have to do it as much as I teach it, remind myself that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God dwells in me. There's nothing going to happen to me that the Holy Ghost doesn't know uh, in advance. And with Him dwelling in me, I can face any trial, tribulation, difficulty, circumstances, knowing that I am sure to come out as a winner. Whatever. Come. I have a comforter to comfort me. God promised us that He would send Him. And when He comes, He's not going to only be with us. He said he will dwell in us. He will become your daily companion. He will order your steps in the word. The Bible says that we be led by the Holy Ghost. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We know and understand what you were sent to do in our life, Holy Spirit. You were sent to mold us, shape us. You were sent to change us. Teach us, Holy Spirit. To understand prayer condition, Holy Spirit. Without you, we cannot make it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. We have no one to teach us. Mm -hmm. You were sent to teach us. There will not be another teacher greater than you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, no one can compare with your teaching and your comfort, Lord. The Holy Spirit have no competition. He was sent to help us. Let him help you. do in your life what you cannot do for yourself. I cannot change myself. Even though I want to change, but I cannot change myself. He sent the Holy Spirit to do what we cannot do for ourselves. We cannot stop certain things. We tried over and over and over and over and over and over. We read books and books and books. The book could not change us. Oh, the power of the Holy Ghost. That's going to power. That will ever come. That can compare with the Holy that dwell in each one of you. Don't look around for help. Look inside. He is your present help. In a time of need, He's always there. When you sleep, 
the angel of the Lord watches over you. You can rest in peace. When anything threatens your life, you have a comforter. You have someone. You have someone. That's some of the witnesses that we made years ago. I got someone. Someone to guide me. I don't know why he didn't go on and put it on record because it was it would have made it. But I guess in due time. God knows what's best. We know what we want, but God knows what's best. Oh my Lord. So keep lift your head up high and remember that you are never alone. Walk like it, talk like it, act like it. That you know that your body is the temple of the Spirit of God. Never talk down on yourself. Always speak highly of who's dwelling in you. Because it's not you that make you, it's who's dwelling in you that make you. trials and tribulation and difficulties and circumstances going to come your way. Yeah. But the Bible tells me to be of a good courage. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yeah. He said rejoice in the Lord. Yeah. And again I say rejoice. Keep on rejoicing in the Lord. Because yes. 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 the battle is not yours. But it's mine says the Lord of hosts. Yeah. What an awesome God. Minister uh, Deacon uh, Wilson always sang the song that Pastor loved so much. I looked all over. I couldn't find nobody. Uh -huh. Nobody greater than the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Nobody can be compared with the Holy Ghost. He said, I looked high and low. Couldn't find nobody. Couldn't find nobody. I read every book I could find. I couldn't find any books. I called everybody that I know, but I still couldn't find any of them. There's nobody. Nobody is free. Nobody is free. Nobody is
that God was you. Can I reach you? He is a forgiving God. Yes, Lord. Mankind might not forgive you. Yes, Lord. But the Bible says, who is man? He don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. But fear God. God will never, ever turn his back on you, okay? Never forget that. You hard on yourself, but God is not hard on you. You create your own war in your own head, yes. but God can create that war. Yes, Lord. You create it because you think you deserve that type of war in your head. No, there's not a perfect person living. Amen. That's why Jesus Christ yeah. is our righteousness. He is all our righteousness. Yes, we live holy, but we make mistakes here and there. But if we believe in his righteousness, your mistake will not take you out of the race. God didn't come looking for perfect people. He come looking for a body of people that would trust him enough to change them. He get back pleasure in making something out of nothing. That's how he started. He stepped out on the universe to create a heaven and earth. There was nothing. There was nothing. And God said, good. I'm going to get a chance to exercise my power because there's nothing in the Bible that he spoke. And when he picked us up, he know that you are nobody. You ain't upset. He know you have problems. He know you have weakness. He know that you do all these things. But God said, uh, I can use that person. Yes. Yes, I see more than what people can see. He said, I see greatness. They see failure. I see greatness. They see a liar. I see greatness. They see a deception. I see greatness. I see greatness. We tend to count him not faithful. 
And God has so many of my people. Yes, you in church, but you're not in me like you used to be because you felt like that I can change you. I have given you us principles to follow. And when you violate those principles, God cannot beat your knee. I was sharing with someone Sunday. Everything that God has promised us come with a condition. Even salvation. The condition to salvation is you've got to believe in your heart. That God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Then you can be saved. But without believing, you cannot be saved. And another condition. He said, give. And what else? What is the condition? Give. I just want to tip you started when you read the word, read the condition as well. Amen. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. But if you give nothing, nothing's going to be given unto you. You see it? Yeah. Open up your understanding. You know, when the Holy Spirit lifts, I'll teach. Nothing like understanding and knowing the voice of God. Yes. Yes. Knowing the voice of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that God speak to the Holy Ghost and tell the Holy Ghost what to say to us. Yes. And the Holy Ghost said, I, I did not speak of my own. I did not glorify myself. I said to lead you to glorify the Father. So the Holy Ghost have a voice. And he speaks to you. He talks to you. He tells you things. And sometimes it's so natural and common. We think it's not the Holy Ghost, but it is. The Holy Ghost might say to you, you didn't lock the door. Oh, I might say to you, why don't you go this direction? You think it's you. But you have sold your soul and your body to the Holy Ghost. You are no longer in charge of your life. You've been bought with the price. The Bible said, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your memory. You are not to hold it anymore. You sold out. You sold out.
God then said, God is unconditional in God. Yes, his prayer had a conditional condition, but he said, I will never leave you. He's always with you. Please do not make your decision on how you feel when God is with you or not. Because feeling can lie to you. Feeling can deceive you. Your feeling, that's what the Bible said, and your feeling is an enemy to God. Your feeling will tell you, I don't feel like the Holy Ghost is living in me. Well, your feeling is lied to you because the Bible said, the Bible said, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whether you feel it or not, whether you see it or not. So my feeling is lied to me. That's why it's good to know the word of God. Yes. So when your mind and your enemy lie to your mind, you have an answer like Jesus said, Devil, it is written. It is written. See, he knew the word. Yeah. When he tempted him, he said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You have to open your mouth and know what you are saying and believe what you are saying and understand what you are saying. It's one thing to know the word, but it's another thing to understand what you know. Proverbs said, knowledge is the principal thing to get. Uh -huh. Wisdom, I think he said as well. Got it. He said, but with all thy getting, get some understanding. We need understanding. The word, I like the word, is not our this Christian sin of problem. Our biggest, one of our problems is not understanding the word. Not understanding the condition of the word. Not understanding the application of the word. Not understanding the, what the word said do. You read it, but then it tell you to do, but you jump, you skip over that part, and you go to the end. Oh my goodness. You know? I will be teaching next Sunday as well. And what the Holy Spirit has to say to us is really, it's good. I understand now. And the Bible said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind can only be renewed with what you understand. Yep. You might know a whole yeah, lot of scripture. Yeah, you yeah, might yeah, can just yeah, rub yeah. them all because your natural understanding can remember a lot of things. But your mind and your action doesn't line up with what you know. Why? Because there's no understanding of what you know. Your mind, the spirit of your mind can only be renewed by what you understand. If you understand that God is great in the spirit of your mind, whatever come up, you will always say, greater is he. That is in me. The he that is in the world. What do you? I understand that my body is the temple of the Spirit of God. I understand that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If I understand that, that's not a demon, that's not a problem, that's not a situation. Take it over from me. Because the greater one told me. He's greater than any problem, greater than any situation, greater than any difficulty. If I understand that the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, Roman 8 and 11, if I understand that, I know it. We all know it. But when you understand that that same spirit, someone said, not a different spirit, but the same Holy Ghost supernatural power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. God said, God said, yeah. I said God. Yeah. I said God. Yeah. I said God. Yeah. God. Yeah. See, that's not an ordinary name. That name's, that name's cover the whole universe. Yeah. 
I can't believe that. That understanding. So you can believe stuff without understanding. You just believe, but you really don't understand. You believe it. You believe that you go out there and get in your car and run. You don't understand what makes that car run unless you're a mechanic. But you believe that you can drive the car, right? And you go out there and drive the car, but do you understand what makes that car roll over? What makes that car tick? It's the motor in the car, but do you understand why that motor runs? But you believe. You believe you can drive that car. So I, I understand this. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm in this teaching that. You can believe the promise and never have faith in it. That's right. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I'm saying to continue with that. See, you can believe the promise. But you don't have faith in God. Come on now. You don't have faith in God who made the promise. Do yeah. steadfast and be unmovable until the promise is manifest. But yet you believe it. You believe with all things. But do you have faith in it to put your life on it? No. But you believe it. And I'm saying, God, is this safe? I want to make sure the Holy Spirit that you can believe a lot of things, a lot of scriptures, but you do not understand them and you do not have faith in them. Why? You complain too much. But yet you know the word, but you still complain. Yet you believe the word is the word of God, yet you still complain. But you believe the word, but you don't have faith in the God that spoke the word. We're going to deal with that. The Bible said, yeah, you have faith, but you need to invest your faith in the object of faith, which is God. And he said, have faith in God. And I believe that we have more faith in the promise than we have in the God that made the promise. We're always talking about the promise, but we're not talking about the God that made the promise, that can manifest the promise. He made the promise. Promise has no faith, no, no power within itself. Faith has no power within itself. Faith needs an object to invest in. Just like you invest your money. You got all this money, but you need to find a good place to invest your money. And that's just like your measure of faith. You have it, but what you invest in it determines your outcome. Amen. You can invest your faith in complaining. You can invest your faith in feeling sorry for yourself. You can invest your faith in criticizing and judging everybody. It's what you invest your faith in. You have it. Every person has it because the Bible says God has dealt to every man. What? But how you invest your faith. Determine your outcome. Think about it. You have it. But what are you investing in? Your own sense. That's why the Bible says, lean not trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to our own understanding. In all of your ways, he knew mankind that we were going to trust our own understanding. He knew that we were going to trust what we think, what we feel. That's why he put in that Bible, trust in the Lord. He said, I'm telling you where to trust. Put your trust in the Lord. Stop trusting in bubble. Stop trusting in the bank. Stop trusting in your credit card. Yeah, all these things are good, but do not trust those things. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall go right there. Yes. Amen. All Amen. Amen. See, God tell us where to put out. Trust. And he also in Matthew 11, 22, where we get, we're going to be doing Mark 11, 22. He said, I'm going to tell you where to invest your faith. In God. Not in the promise. Not in faith. Some people get all wrapped up. Faith in faith. Faith in faith have no power. Faith in the object. The object have the power. Not faith. And we just got so carried away with the word faith. But the Bible says have faith in God before you speak to that mountain. Amen. Have faith in the God that's going to move the mountain. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Yes.
said, now believe. Believe what? Believe that you would step in and go all the way down before he said, whatsoever that has believed when I pray, desire. Whatsoever that desire when, I, when you pray, believe that you receive it. You shall have them. No. Go back up to the beginning, verse 22. He said, before all this happened, have faith in who? God. God. Because only God can manifest what he promised. Every promise that God made, I'm telling you, it is a promise that only God Almighty himself can fulfill. You can try all you want to. Just like Abraham tried, God promised him he's going to be the father of many nations. He got tired of waiting because he just believed, but he didn't have faith that God was going to do it because he was waiting too long. And that's why he tried to help God. But it still was a promise that only God could manifest. Yeah. So back off. Don't try to help him. God will need to help. <laughs> I think my time is up. Let's just stand up on our Holy Ghost feet and give God some praise yeah. in thank you for the movement of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for speaking a word of encouragement to our heart, God. Thank you for teaching us understanding, Lord. And we will leave this place, God. We will leave this place knowing and understanding. And understanding will change us. See, I can only change by what I understand. If I don't understand it, I would never change. But if I understand it, I will change the way I live, the way I walk. Thank you, God. And we give you glory in this house. God, I pray that you breathe your holy power. Shake us again, Lord. Thank you. 